We just set up our William Optics CAT91 rig in a way that is easy to operate and efficient to set up and take down. In this video, we go through the setup and components that make this work so well. I'm Ren Edwards. And I'm Boyd Edwards. Let's talk sensor sensibility. In our CAT91 test video, which is linked in the description below, we show that this scope produces impressive stars that are small and round, all the way into the corners of a full frame sensor, just like its spot diagrams. For an f4.9, 448 millimeter scope, this is amazing. Yes. William Optics claims that the CAT91 has a 55 millimeter image circle and is able to support up to a medium format sensor, which is the next size up from a full frame sensor. We paired the CAT91 with our ZWO 6200mm Pro full frame camera with a 61 megapixel sensor. This pairing gives an impressive 4.6 degree by 3.1 degree field of view that fits the Andromeda Galaxy with plenty of room. We control the camera, mount, and other components using a ZWO ASI Air Plus, which is easy to use, reliable, and inexpensive. The ASI Air lacks some of the advanced capabilities of Nina, and it works only with ZWO products, but it's available on Android and iOS, so we can use it with any of our phones and tablets. Nina is available only for Windows, so it's not an option for me. I'm a Mac guy. We used 2-inch stick-on Velcro to attach the ASI Air to the back of the electronic filter wheel, which allows us to easily swap our whole image train back and forth between our CAT91 and our Celestron Edge HD 9.25. We have the discontinued ASI Air Plus with 256 gigabytes of internal storage and a micro SD card slot, and paired it with two SanDisk Extreme 512 gigabyte micro SD cards to facilitate fast data transfer. I usually take images in my backyard, and Ren, who lives two blocks away, stores and processes the images on his computer. Transferring 100 plus megabyte files is slow and unwieldy for cloud transfers through services like Google Drive. It's faster for me to swap cards in the ASI Air Plus and drop off the full SD card to Ren. The ASI Air internal storage doesn't accept power over USB. So if dad forgets to insert an SD card into the ASI Air and brings it over to transfer the data, I have to find a way to power the ASI Air during the transfer. On top of that, the ASI Air internal storage transfer speed is a slow 35 or 30 megabytes per second. So data transfers take a fair amount of time, even with a single night of light and flat frames. The SanDisk Extreme has transfer speeds that are three to four times faster than the ASI Air internal storage, and adds the convenience of being easily swappable. Z ZWO, if you are listening, please bring back the micro SD slot on the ASI Air. Because we'd like another one. <laughs> the ZWO EAF autofocuser keeps the focus tack sharp. We autofocus after every filter change, which we do about once per hour. We decided on an off axis guider instead of a guide scope mostly because we wanted an image train that is easily swappable between our CAT91 and our Edge HD at F10, which requires off-axis guiding. For that, we got the ZWO OAG L large off-axis guider, which we paired with a ZWO ASI 174mm guide camera, which has large 5.86 micron pixels and a large 11 millimeter by seven millimeter sensor to make it easier to find guide stars. The ZWO seven position two inch filter wheel 
holds all of our filters and keeps them safe and dust free. The ZWO off-axis guider, ZWO electronic filter wheel, and ZWO ASI 6200 camera were made for each other and provide a rock solid imaging train with no flexure. Sounds like a little marriage coming together of those elements. We use the two inch Antlia LRGB V Pro series broadband filters and the Antlia Ultra 2.5 nanometer hydrogen alpha, sulfur two and oxygen three narrowband filters, which do a fantastic job passing nebulae emission wavelengths and excluding all others. We will be analyzing the spectra of these filters in a Utah State University lab. So stay tuned for that. The AM5 harmonic mount and TC40 tripod work well together and give RMS guiding between 0.3 arc seconds and 0.7 arc seconds when there are plenty of guide stars and the target is high in the sky. The AM5 is no longer available and has been replaced by the AM5N, which looks better to me in all respects. The ZWO 200mm pier extension keeps the imaging train away from the tripod legs and makes for quick and easy mounting and removal of the AM5. We normally leave the mount attached to the telescope together with all of our cabling and simply loosen the three thumb screws at the top of the pier extension to detach the mount telescope combination from the pier extension at the end of an imaging session. We have an SV Boney SV192 12 volt dew heater strip to keep the objective lens clear of dew. We haven't tried this strip out yet, but plan to control it using one of the ASI Air 12 volt ports. For flats, we are using a Pegasus Astro Flatmaster 250L to allow us to take flats on the Celestron Edge HD 9.25 with the mount in the home position. We machined a hoop out of 8th inch fiberboard and glued it to the front of the Flatmaster to allow us to take such flats on the CAT 71 and CAT 91, we made inserts that prevent the flat master from slipping when the mount is in the home position. For power, we have two solutions. We made an adapter that allows us to plug into a car's 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. When we have 120 volt AC power available, as I do in my backyard, we use a 120 volt to 12 volt adapter that I had on hand. At our dark site, instead of using the car cigarette lighter plug, we use a 350 watt hour lithium, lithium ion battery that I built at very little cost with a voltage regulator to keep the voltage at a constant 13.9 volts. This battery easily powers our equipment all night, even for long winter nights. We made this cable snag preventer out of thin polyethylene plastic and two inch stick on Velcro. This prevents cables from snagging during tracking and meridian flips and allows us to sleep easy at night. We use a 25 pound weight plate in the tripod hammock to further stabilize the already stable mount. So that's our CAT91 setup. Links to our equipment are in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.